Hi, I'm Drew, and I'm an amateur model builder. I'm working on building a model layout of the Frisco Railroad in my basement. And on this episode, I'm going to be building a 40-inch boxcar. So on this episode, I'm going to be doing a start-to-finish build of a 40-inch boxcar. It's an Athrum from their Roundhouse line. I don't know how long ago I got this. The sticker on it says it was $5.25. And these things are going for about $20 to $25 now, so it must have been a long time ago. So it should be a lot of fun, and let's get started. When I get started with any kit, the first thing I do is check out all the pieces that are in the box and browse through the instructions. Just want to get a lay of the land and see what the steps are in the process, anticipate any problems, and start mentally making a plan right away for how I'm going to get this all together. I did find a couple surprises in this kit. A couple of pieces that were made out of different materials than the rest of the kit. So I dug into the instructions to see where they might fit. But I couldn't find anything in the instructions about it. Then I found this. I do have another model that's a Titchy Train Group model. So these instructions must be through them. I needed to move forward without any instructions on this model. And it seems that those pieces don't really go to this. They go to something else. So I set them aside. Since I'm doing a full repaint on this model, I start with a base coat of primer. Starting with thin coats, I layer up until it's completely covered and you can't see any of the branding on the original. Once the priming was complete, I needed to figure out the base color for my model. I'm starting with a mixture of fire red and Russian Air Force dark green. I began experimenting with different ratios of these two paints. I'd start with the ratio, paint it onto a blank index card, making note of the ratio. From there I could determine what mixture I'd want to go with finally for my boxcar red. I decided to go with a ratio of one part fire red to two parts Russian Air Force Green. My next step was to do a final test of this paint on a plastic spoon. Plastic spoons provide a great medium to test your paint colors on before you put them on the final model. Again, starting with light coats, I'd build up to a darker coat to see the final result of my paint. Next, I began preparing the parts for assembly. I clipped off all the flashing, all the bits of the sprues, and then filed all that down until I had a final product that looked good. there was a lot of this work to be done to get the parts all cleaned up and ready for assembly. The wheels for the brake were especially messy. Lots of flashing to take care of. The next step was paint. I generally paint pieces separately, but it depends on the construction of the model. In this case, I started with painting the bottom with my version of a grimy black. I generally try to test fit pieces together just to make sure I know how everything comes together. In this case, I was a little confused on the doors. 
and not having instructions, it took me a little bit of time to figure out how exactly all this went together. Once I figured this out, I glued in the rails for these doors. However, I left the doors separate for the time being. Next was the base coat of my boxcar red. Again, starting with the thin coat, I'd build up the layers until I had a thickness that I was happy with. Next, I painted the inside of the floor wood. I needed to complete the inside painting of the boxcar before I did the final assembly, otherwise it'd be really difficult to reach. This included the weathering. I began weathering with a gray wash. However, I wasn't too happy with it. It was a little blotchy and a little too subtle for what I was looking for. So I began to mix my own wash instead, using just chocolate brown. I watered this down considerably, but not as much as I usually would do for a wash. I wanted it to be a pretty thick color. I would dry the wash a little bit with just straight air from my airbrush, and then using a dry brush, I would streak it. I repeated this process several times. Here's the final result from those steps. Next, I did some dry brushing with deck tan. Putting just a small amount on my brush and then wiping most of it off onto a paper towel, I lightly brushed in multiple directions to highlight ridges, and to make streaks to simulate wood. Here's the final result from that dry brush. Next, I assembled the bottom. Moving on to the top. Dry fitting first, I found I had to file down several of the tabs to make them fit in the top. If I had it to do over again, I would have glued in the walkway on top before gluing in the bottom. This would allow me to get a much better glue job. Once this was done, it was mine to move on to decals. 
This can be kind of a time-consuming and tedious task. Not one of my favorites. This is one of the processes I'm looking to improve upon. I use microscale, microset, and microsol in the decal process. I begin by soaking the decal in water for a few seconds. Then I spread a thin layer of microset on the model. I position the decal on the model, blot away the extra. I fine tune their placement, and then I move on to the next decal. Once they have dried, I apply Microset. This helps thin the decals and make them conform to the shape on the model more easily. Once all the decals have dried, I apply a flat varnish. As you can see, I got a little over anxious and munched one of the decals. I'll work with that later. I've also got a few other spots on the paint that I'll need to deal with in weathering. So you may have noticed, <laughs> um, but I didn't notice until I was putting the decals on the, the model, um, but I, I forgot to put the weights in. Uh, the weights help it ride a little bit smoother, help it stay on the track. So I'm going to figure out some way to put those in. Um, uh, you also may have noticed that I haven't put the doors on yet. Uh, that's by choice. I'm um, thinking about putting some crates or some barrels or those sorts of things inside there, add a little bit of detail to the model. Um, once I decide that, I'll glue them in permanently. Uh, but for now, I'm just going to slip them in and, and have them there for the time being. I was able to wedge in the weights. Once I had them into approximate place, I used some super glue and uh, on the end of a toothpick and, and, and got it in there and got those weights to sit down really pretty well. They seem adhered really well using this process. Now most of the assembly has been complete, the paint and decals are done, it's time to move on to weathering. I begin weathering by mixing some wood, airbrush color, in with the box box color to make a little bit lighter. This is for some light fading on it. I apply this with my airbrush. This effect is pretty subtle, and I want it to be subtle. I do some additional fading with a flat white. I thin it down quite a bit, and again, apply it with my airbrush. I hold it back very far, and I just barely press down on it to just get a very subtle effect of the white. Now it's time for the dark fading. I dry brush this on and I use a mixture of my boxcar red and chocolate brown.
This dark fading is going to do a great job of covering up that crinkled decal. I'll recreate some of the marks I saw on the prototypes. I use a fine line brush with thinned down paint to do this. Sometimes the edges get a little bit harsh, so I'll soften those a bit with a sponge. Next, it's time for chipping. I start with the deck tan and do sponge painting with the deck tan. I'll dip the sponge brush lightly and take most of it off on the paper towel. I dab the sponge lightly on the top. Once this sponging is complete, I go back in with a fine brush. I thin down the paint and I connect dots from the sponge painting to make larger chips. I applied chipping to the top as well as the ladders anywhere that there would be rougher wear where we've got a flat top that is going to be more prone to chipping. While I had the deck tan out, I went ahead and did some dry brushing on the walkways on the top of the boxcar. The edges were a little too crisp on this chipping, so I went back in and did some dry brushing around the top of the chipping. Using just the corner of the brush, I barely touched the top just to fade out those edges of the chips on top of the boxcar. Here is the end result of that dry brushing. You can see how it just softened those edges and added a little bit more depth. Now it's time to move on to the dark chipping with German Black Brown. Again, thinning it down and using a fine brush, I apply the black brown to the inside of the light chipping that I had done before. This helps simulate the dark rust that you would see in the middle of these chips. I apply this everywhere that I had played the light chipping before. While I was using the black brown, I did some dry brushing along the walkway, highlighting the bolts. Here you can see the dark chipping. 
Now it's time to apply the rust to the chipping using orange brown and light rust. Using a fine brush, I apply this to the outside of the dark chipping I'd done before. I then use a clean, damp, flat brush or round brush to dab at the edges and soften them out. This can take a little bit of practice. The paint tends to dry quickly because it's acrylic paint. Thinning down the paint gives you a little bit more working time. Here's the end result of the rust. Next, I apply some rust wash. I tend to switch back and forth from different brushes in this process, depending on the effect that I want. I can also apply some of the rust wash with a fine brush and then blend it out with the round brush. With the chipping complete, I move on to do some dark washes. I started with Russian Air Force Green and Dark Gray. The result was actually a bit too green for my liking. I started by adding a little bit more dark gray to try to tone that down, but it was still too green. Finally, I added some chocolate brown, which is a little bit more of a warm tone, and toned down that green. I thinned this down considerably. I focus this wash on the bolt lines on the boxcar. In addition, I applied it to the top and the side as well. When applying it on the side, I really only applied it on the bottom side of the ribs. This will help darken the shadows underneath them and make them really pop. I applied the wash on the doors as well. Here is the end result. I then moved on to weathering and painting the trucks. As usual, I started with some primer. Then I painted the trucks with grimy black. I really like these rust pigments from Vallejo, and I use them in a number of different ways. These pigments add some nice texture to the rust. I also use Tamiya Thinner to help them stick to the models. One of the primary ways I like to use them is for the rust on the wheels for the train. I'll mix the pigment with some Tamiya Black. This helps darken it. 
and really gives a nice effect. This process can be a little bit tedious. Once the paint is dried, I'll go back and scrape it off with my X-Acto knife and get the wheels where they touch the train rails really clean. I've seen a few different ways to do it, most of which are really tedious. Now it's time for final assembly. I start with the couplers. I'm using KD magnetic couplers in this case. However, they didn't fit quite right, as you can see. I'll have to go back and fix this later. Next, it was time to put the wheels on, which was my last step. So here it is, the finished project. I sure hope you all enjoyed watching me complete this box car. I enjoy, sure enjoyed putting it together. Next time, I'll be working on the track plan for the White River Line, and I hope you can join me for that as well. Please click on like on this video, subscribe if you want to see some more of this content, and I sure love to hear some feedback on my model making techniques, so you can put those on down below. I'd love to hear back from all of you. Thanks again for joining me on this episode of Modeling the White River Line.